Hello, welcome back to the GameSpot stage right here at E3 2015. I'm joined by Sven and Farang from Larian Studios. Thank you for coming all the way from Belgium uh, to show us off the console version of a game that uh, won, actually it won GameSpot's PC Game of the Year in 2014. That's uh, correct, correct. Divinity Original Sin, uh, now coming to the PlayStation 4. Yeah, and Xbox One also. And Xbox One as well. Right, uh, we're Steve showing Wallace. the PS4 version here. So we've got a, we've got a running here uh, on the stage. Uh, so what is this? What is Enhanced Edition? Is it just the? Is this a, a port of the PC version? Are you adding stuff? What? Oh, it's much more than that. It's uh, we actually consider it like a, a completely different game. Oh wow! Uh, because we've added so much stuff to it. Uh, it's had full voice recordings. Uh, we revamped the entire skill system. Every single skill which was in there, which was a little bit useless, was replaced by another skill. Uh, we've added a lot of extra quests, enhanced content. Uh, we've changed the entire ending of the game. Oh wow! Uh, we uh, we really did a lot of things on top of it. Excellent. Uh, let's see it in action. Um, I All guess right. the best way of uh, of, of, okay. of showing is to actually see it happening. Uh, right, so, so whereabouts are we now? How long into the game is this? Big pardon? How long into the game is this? Where uh, we're about we? 15 hours in the game, and we're in a place uh, called Silver Glen. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show off the, the controls by uh, doing some elemental interactions. So I just uh, cast a midnight oil on the fire surface, which calls it to extend and uh, connect with the poison surface. And that basically made it, um, yeah, well, explode everything, essentially. <laughs> now I'm dousing that fire. Now I select uh, a uh, lightning skill. That's making, uh, elect that's making me electrify <laughs> the water. And now if I do that again, I'm going to freeze the entire thing. <laughs> uh, so that's just like the base elemental interactions that you have. So you have your hot bar at the bottom. You can toggle it. You can reconfigure it whenever mm. you want. And then obviously, if I fall on the ice <laughs> or walk on the ice, I will fall on my uh, on, on my your butt. ass. Uh, yeah. Such a great element of the game was 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 how those different sort of environmental mechanics, uh, the the puzzle uh, solving, and actually how you use them in combat as well. Yeah. So that's that's the next uh, thing we're going to look at. I'll head into combat so you can see how that works. Uh, the Divinity series has been around for a long time. Uh, Original Sin, I'm guessing, was the most successful of any of the Divinity games yeah, you made. Yeah, by far. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so it, it did really well last year. Uh, and uh, yeah, we were really happy with the results. Uh, so I entered combat here. The combat is turn-based. Uh, so I'm uh, Scarlet. My fire mage is first in line. Mm -hmm. So we have a bunch of uh, elemental flowers here. So evil smelling flowers and then uh, a bunch of earth elementals. So if I look at the earth elementals, I can easily examine what their stats are, and I see that they have a vulnerability to air. So I happen to have my lightning spell with me. So I'm going to see if I can cast uh, that one. And it's just in range. So I'm going to do that. And uh, my stun failed, unfortunately, but it did indeed do a lot of damage. <laughs> so at the bottom of the bar, you see that I have my action points. So if I want to move, it's going to cost me action points. Mm. Right now, uh, I only have one action point, so I'm going to keep it, and it's going to carry over into the next turn. So let's see what the enemy does. So this guy is hasting himself. We actually revamped every single encounter in the game. We added a lot of extra AI. Oh, really? Uh, we added a new mode of uh, gameplay, which is called Tactician, in which the AI is actually uh, based on all the things we saw people do, and so it knows all the counters. So oh, it's really? very interesting. Yeah, so what, what, what was the impetus for uh, making all these uh, additions to the game? Are you trying to make a new type of game for fans of Original Sin, or are you... Are you trying to make a sort of the purest version of Original Sin, the best version? I think it's uh, more of the latter. Uh, there were a number of things that we weren't happy about. I mean, the game was already pretty good, uh, yeah. but there were a lot of areas where we could improve it. And given that it was so successful and we were bringing it to console, uh, it started with the console port and it says, you know what, we'll just go for the entire thing. Yeah. And uh, we overdid it, honestly. But I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we, we really overdid it. Yeah. So I'm casting a new master skill here, which is called uh, Rain of Arrows. So master skills are also a new thing. So as you head out deeper into the game, uh, you're going to be able to learn a whole bunch of new skills that in the past you couldn't access, actually. So these are grenades. That's also new. Uh, I'm going to fast track my rogue here. And uh, I'm going to make him uh, go into the backstep area of this earth elemental. So that's also something new. So he has extra action points as a result of the fast track. And if you look at him, you'll see that he now has dual wielding. So yep. the loot system has also been completely uh, changed. So <laughs> if I go to uh, my uh, two daggers here, they're legendary daggers, so that's also new that's been added. Mm. Uh, as well as the fact, of course, that I can uh, do my... Uh, <laughs> that I can do my uh, backstab on this guy. <laughs> so I'm going to... Oh, sorry, I'm, I misclicked there. So let me go in there and select the guy and do a backstab damage. Nice. So that's guaranteed critical damage. All right, so I'm going to carry over into my next turn. 
see these flowers are attacking him, but he's immune to poison. Mm. So that's also a, uh, a neat thing to have. And uh, I'm planning actually to, to kill this all in one big move with a master skill, which is Meteor Shower, mm. which my Fire Mage has. And that's this one over here. So if I'm going to cast this on them, Get them all that's together. going to do a lot of boom. There we go. So master skills require a lot of action points, mm. uh, and they only become available once you invested a lot in certain abilities. But once you have them, you can do a lot of damage. Unfortunately, the enemy also has that. Mm. So they are going to, to well, eventually use all those things against you. So then you'll have to find counters against that. And uh, considering you've added so much to this, um, is this coming out on PC at all? Yes. It is yeah. as well. Everybody okay. who bought the game on Steam or on um, GOG is going to get the game for free, actually. You it's going to be really? a separate, a separate <laughs> yeah, entry yeah, in, their, in their Steam library. That's incredible. How do, you, how do you justify that yourself? Is this something like giving back to the fans? Or? That's it. Uh, that's it. I mean, Original Sin definitely has allowed us to do a lot more in the game. And uh, as a result of that, uh, we, we, we could make this thing. And so we said, OK, well, we're just going to give it for free. I wow. mean, because they already paid for Original Sin. Yeah. So we're making the in-house edition. Enhanced edition is aimed also at a console audience. So they haven't been able to try this out. This is the first time that a game like this actually has been made for a console. We've tried to find something. And yeah. I think like in the entire history of console dom, there's nothing like this. Yeah, Especially yeah, one true. which uh, has the feature which I'm about to show you right now. So, uh, if Faring, if you can join in. Yeah, sure. I'll just create so Faring is going to join in. You can play the game uh, on console, online, multiplayer. So you can play against one another, or with one another. And what we did now here is uh, Faring joined in. And so he took control of Roderick, which is one of the characters. Excellent. And uh, we are now in uh, co-op mode. Split so screen. And you can drop in, drop out. Yeah, you want. Really, yeah. anything you want. I'm basically a full-fledged so player like uh, That's fantastic. Sven here. I, I, I'm so oh, impressed by the the um, interface you've done as well, because obviously you guys are. Well, I I consider you like a very like PC-centric uh, developer. You've got a lot more sort of lines of resolution. People sit closer to the screen. Like. Making classic style RPGs, there's so much interface going on. What was it like for you trying to make this work properly with like a, a controller and also making it, you know, make it so that it's it's visible, especially when you split the screen down and double up everything. Uh, it was a lot of work. Mm. I mean, uh, we uh, we started working on it actually when Original Sin came out, and we spent a year on it with uh, like uh, at that time the entire studio. So there's uh, doing the changes, but also actually in implementing the split screen, making it run in full HD mm. uh, on both Xbox One and PS4. So that was that was quite some effort. So uh, let me head into uh, Silver Glen here and show you a little bit more of what we can do. So I'm in front of uh, the house of a guy here who is holding a secret in this uh, village, and my uh, my mission here is to uh, figure out where his secret hideout is. Hmm. He's the head of an immaculate cult. And so there are several ways that I can do this. And I'll, uh, but huh. first, maybe I, we should show uh, the, um, let me start like Scarlet here and talk to Roderick. So this is our, our cooperative dialogue system. We can chat with each other now. But now <laughs> it's much cooler because we're sitting next to one another. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And that was actually always the vision of the game that you were going to be able to do that. So uh, I am uh, now asking him, like, where the hell were you during the fight? So and uh, he and can I'm say, saying, "Well, whoop de diddly do." It's, Does that it's mean like you good have cop, to, uh, bad cop? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The thing about this is also we voice recorded every single dialogue in the game. Yeah. Wow. We started recording in the uh, beginning of January, yeah. and so we finished actually last week. Uh, so <laughs> there's a there's a uh, there's a lot of voice in there. Eighty-eight thousand lines. And and some fantastic uh, quests, like the, the stories and the quests that you find in Divinity Orig Original Sin, there's so many that sort of that last, that you remember. Um, have, you, have you changed any of those? I'm guessing you've added a lot oh, more. Oh, we did a lot. Uh, yeah. We actually, in the, um, the original game, you had these generic dialogues that have all been removed, replaced by unique dialogues. Wow. We did a lot of extra yeah. characterization on all of the characters so that they're more interesting and that you have for, more immersion for them. Uh, we added stuff to quests. We um, made new quests. Uh, as I said, we changed the entire ending also. And so that's that's really <laughs> that's really rewarding when you get there. Yeah. Uh, we have gave a back a companions extra backgrounds. Uh, the puzzles are all different. Uh, if you play tactician mode, you'll discover that you have a completely set of different puzzles. That's awesome. Uh, there's yeah. a lot. There's a lot in here. Yeah, I feel terrible for even saying that this is a port. I think at the start of this interview, it's clear it that you guys have. It's not a yeah. port. It's uh, amazing. I, I, am I right? In th it's been so long now that I, my my memory is sort of 
uh, betraying me, but was Divinity Original Sin originally a Kickstarter game as well? It was. Yeah. It was like yeah. one of the earlier ones. Yeah, yeah, we were one of, and uh, we kickstarted in April 2013. Yeah. So that's some time ago already. Do you think you'd go down that r route again? Has that been a, a like a, you guys have had a series that's been around for a long time. The, the yeah. Divinity series, what, was it back in 2002 or something? I yeah. yeah, so yeah. Divinity 1, or yeah. Divine Divinity as yeah. it was called, uh, was released in 2002. And so uh, it's been around for, what, what is that, yeah, 13, 13 years? 13 years or so, yeah, we're, we're, we're aging ourselves here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for you guys, using Kickstarter, is that something you'll, you'll, you'll do again? Like, even if you don't require the money to do it, maybe you do, maybe you don't. That sort of interaction with your fans, was that worthwhile? Oh. Well, the definitely, I mean, so we had Kickstarter and then we had the early access, right? Yeah. And those two shaped the game tremendously because we had enormous amount of feedback from them. Uh, so I think that we'll probably be interested in doing something like that, but uh, we still have, to have a lot of work to do to finish this one, <laughs> and we're working on the next one, so stay tuned for that. Awesome. Uh, when will we be able to play the Enhanced Edition of Divinity Original Sin? Uh, it's going to come out this fall. Uh, Excellent. So uh, we are hoping for October, but we still have some work on it. There's about 5,000 bucks to crush. Okay. So if it's not ready, then it'll be a little bit later. But it's coming. It's going to come. Uh, I can sit here and watch you guys play all day. Do you have any more of this quest you can show us? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah let's no. keep going. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, see a little bit so, more. So, um, so this is how you sneak, right? Uh, I turn myself into a bush. <laughs> if I get seen by a line of sight, come on here, you <laughs> stupid cat. Uh, come here, will you? Well, he's supposed to see me, but he's short-sighted cat. All right. <laughs> Never mind, I'm going to go inside here. So I'm going to show you one of the ways that I can uh, access uh, something which is behind a uh, very long quest, and that is actually by uh, using the mechanics of the game. Mm. But uh, what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to give control of the game to Farang. So because I can switch uh, control over the characters oh, to Farang. Yes, of course. So if I, uh, so I can say, for instance, okay, you can control uh, Wolgraf, which is my rogue. So, and I'm going to go off with my characters to do something else over there. So if you can do the... All right. So uh, basically, as Sven said, uh, we're source hunters and we're in this little village to uh, actually infiltrate in this uh, uh, cult called the Immaculates. Mm. And you can do that through the designed way, which is talking to this character, or we can use the systemics, as uh, Sven mentioned. In this case, uh, we got a locked hatch here. Uh, which uh, Loik, the high priest, is very protective about. So uh, he really doesn't want me touching this, but <laughs> I know he's a high priest and he's got to have access to Sacred Stone, their base of operations. So I'm guessing that underneath this hatch, there is a portal that uh, he uses to get there. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to uh, become, you know, we're going to go in sneak mode and see if we can actually uh, pickpocket this guy. So he's <laughs> a barrel now. I'm a barrel now, uh, but the moment I move into anybody's line of sight, I'll get caught. Now, what these uh, you know QA guys discovered was, if you actually uh, make yourself invisible and then go into sneak mode, uh, <laughs> the systemics of the game will make sure that uh, characters don't see you. Oh my so God. then I can actually move behind him, pickpocket him, <laughs> which opens his pocket. I can take the keys that we want. Also don't the take too much. Don't take too much. Yeah. Also <laughs> the amulet, because we really need the amulet. But. Uh, you know, uh, pickpocketing is based on weight and value. Yes. So if you pick up really heavy stuff, they'll notice immediately that they're being pickpocketed. So uh, I'll go out of my sneak mode, and we're in his little uh, hideout here. And as expected, there's a waypoint that mm. leads us uh, to near the village. And we also got all the stuff we can loot. Now, the thing was, you know, we're converting a PC game. You know, the controls of the PC game, we're conveying it to uh, the console. And the biggest problem is that on the PC, you could point and click stuff. But you can't really do that on the console. So we had separate, uh, you know, several ways of actually uh, selecting stuff. Like mm. if you look at things and you use your uh, shoulder buttons, you can actually cycle through them. Oh, cool. Um, you can uh, click your left thumbstick to uh, activate a cursor mode uh, that you can accurately move over stuff and oh, cool. uh, do things with. But we also have our uh, area search mode. If you hold X pressed, uh, anything that falls in the diameter actually huh. gets put in the list and you can interact with it. And basically, you can really do anything uh, you want with it. You can even uh, read notes uh, from this list. So we've, we've really tried our best to uh, involve these separate ways of uh, gameplay yeah. so that so people can play this game as comfortably as they can That's over a span of very 100 clever, hours. Because it, yeah. it saves so much time. Well, the thing is, it's a big game. And if you want to play it any way you want, you should be able to do that. So it's important to note also that we didn't remove anything that was there in PC version. So yeah. the same amount of death is present. Yeah. And uh, basically what everybody was wondering about, can you actually do this with a controller? Mm. And so uh, based on the, what we've seen here of people playing, it looks like it's really 
going. Uh, it takes them one to two minutes, and then they're into Excellent. the game. Uh, Sven and Frank, thank you so much for coming on the GameSpot stage and right. uh, showing us Divinity. Uh, best of luck um, finishing this version. I can't wait to see it more. And I can't wait to play through it again on my, my PlayStation <laughs> 4 <laughs> Xbox Super. One. Thank awesome. you Thanks sure. for no having us. Yeah, that's Thanks all. a lot. Uh, yeah. And that's uh, the end of GameSpot's day two right here at E3 2015. we got a bumper uh, day coming up tomorrow, though. E3 is not quite I can't believe it's only day two. It feels like we've been here for about five or six days at this stage. Tell Since me Bethesda about it. Bethesda started on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, tomorrow we got a bunch of cool stuff on Parmalock. He's going to be on um, mostly uh, talking about Oculus, I imagine. Uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Street Fighter V, uh, and a bunch more games. So make sure you stay tuned to GameSpot.com. Thank you so much for watching on GameSpot on YouTube's E3 Hub and, of course, on Hitbox. Thank you so much, everyone in the production crew, for setting up today's show, making it run oh so smooth like butter. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Take care.